A model such as this might be thought of as a giant relief map of a certain area. Seen from above, the model looks like an aerial view of the real thing, doesn't it? The small lake looks like a lake. See the islands in the lake? See the airport and the roads? What else do you see that you recognize? Trees? Streams? Do you know what this is? How about this? It's the same thing. It's a dam. Only this is a symbol for a dam, the way it appears on a map. Symbols are the picture language of maps. A dam, a river, a bridge, a road, and a school. The map maker uses these symbols to give us information. Some symbols are easy to recognize because they look like what they represent. Other symbols have to be memorized, like this one showing the direction for north. We need to know directions to know where we are, to become oriented. This symbol tells about distance. We call this the scale for a mile. The more you know about the symbols of a map, the more useful the map becomes to you. If we take away the symbols for the man-made objects, a map can still tell us a lot about where we are and what we will see if we explore. You will notice that the lines in nature are very seldom straight lines, nor are the shapes regular shapes. Each turn of the river is a little different. Each tree has a slightly different form. The edges of the forest and the ridges and the valleys are rough and irregular. Here we can see what the poet means when he speaks of the river winding its way to the sea. So when you see an irregular line on a model or a map, it often symbolizes a dividing line drawn by nature and then traced by the map maker. One of the most common of such lines is the dividing line between the land and the sea. We call such a dividing line a shoreline or a coastline. From here, a coastline would be easy to find, wouldn't it? That's right, it's the place where the land and the water meet. But how about this drawing? If the shoreline is here and here, how would we show it on a map? Seen from above, a shoreline looks pretty flat. Even so, it's easy to tell the land from the water, isn't it? The colors are different. And since the water looks blue, let's use blue for the water in our drawing. A make-believe line called the datum plane separates the water below from the land above. Let's color the land brown. We are adding to our picture symbols color symbols. And on a map, they look like this. To tell how deep the water is, and how high the land is, let's add to the color symbols line symbols called contours or contour lines. Contour lines are drawn at even intervals. Here, every 10 feet below the water line and every 10 feet above. For the deepest part of the water, let's use a dark blue. This color will represent water 20 to 30 feet deep. From 0 to 10 and from 10 to 20, let's use lighter shades of blue. On our map, they will look like this. For the highest layer of land, a light brown is used, and the brown gets darker as it gets closer to the water. A map using colors and contours looks like this. Even without the numbers, if you understand the symbols, 
you can quickly tell where the water is deepest and the land highest. Downhill, uphill, and where the contour lines are closer together, the hill is steeper. And this is a good thing to know because looks can be deceiving. Even on the model, this doesn't look like much of a hike, does it? But what appears to be flat is actually rough and uneven. Without contour lines or color symbols, you might not know that in order to make this walk, you'd have some climbing to do, up one hill and down another, at the bottom of which is a stream with no bridge. You'd have to wade the stream and then climb an even steeper hill on the other side. What looked like a short walk might take a long time, especially if half of it is uphill and the other half down. What about the towns and cities where so many of us live? Have you ever been up in a helicopter where you could look down and see the houses and other buildings below? If you were going to make a map, how would you show a heavily populated area such as this? It would all depend on how big the map was, wouldn't it? And how much we wanted to show. If we were making a model, or a giant relief map, we could show our town like this. The symbols would look very much like what they stood for. This would be known as a large scale map. In other words, the map is large enough and the area shown is small enough to allow the symbols to look like what they stand for. But not all maps are like this, nor do they need to be. We may be interested in a larger area. If so, the scale for our map must become smaller. It becomes less important for the houses and buildings to look so much like what they are. We may be more interested in the streets and the highways approaching the town. Or we may be interested in the land that surrounds the town. You will notice that the more of the area shown, the less like a town our symbol becomes. On maps that show very large areas, a town, even a city, may be shown by just a small dot. Now we see that a small amount of the map represents a lot of territory. Therefore, we say it is a small-scale map. But now suppose we were not interested in the towns, but in the rainfall of the United States. The map maker could very easily give us such information by simply adding to his map what we call a legend. A legend tells us what sign language is used by the person making the map to give us special information. If you were moving from one part of the United States to another, and you wanted to know about the rainfall in the area of your new home, a map such as this could tell you what to expect. In these areas, you could expect lots of rain, lawns and trees, and flowers would be plentiful. But how about here? Very little rain. You would be moving to a desert country. A map can also tell us about temperature, elevation, prevailing winds. Almost anything can be told with maps by the use of symbols. Even about crops, transportation, industry and people. It all depends on what the map maker wants to say. So the next time you look at a map, See how much more it tells you when you learn what the symbols stand for, when you learn the picture language of the map maker's story concerning that part of the earth he is trying to represent.